Welcome to the Weather Insights Podcast. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Lindner. It is Tuesday morning, June 18th, and we are looking at potential tropical cyclone out in the Gulf of Mexico. Here's the latest track. It's basically stationary right now as of uh, 4 a.m. this morning, and it's expected to make landfall there in Mexico, just I think that's north of Tampico, south of Brownsville, about 1 a.m. Thursday. And Jeff, the National Hurricane Center now has another yellow hatched area in that same vicinity. So I wanted to do the best I can to explain this because uh, I can understand why this may be confusing. They're two separate entities. So the, the red X there is the potential tropical cyclone. That's the track that we just showed you. But the yellow hatched area is a new area of potential development, although very low, about 20%. National Hurricane Center is keeping an eye on this for this weekend. So we're not quite done Again, uh, potential tropical cyclone, the Red X making landfall sometime early Thursday morning. Then we'll keep our eyes on that area in the southwestern Gulf for this weekend. Yep, not confusing at all. So uh, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll deal with one of them at a time. And what's interesting is is this weekend is is a very similar setup with this very broad area of low pressure down here. In the southern Gulf of Mexico, so you know, kind of what we have now, you can you can just see this very broad area of low pressure. The uh, hurricane uh, reconnaissance aircraft will be flying back down in, into this region this afternoon, later this morning, this afternoon, to see if they can uh, find any sort of well-defined center. Um, you know, so far we we just haven't really been able to see that or find that. And you can see all the big thunderstorms are blowing up in a band over here on the eastern side of the Yucatan, so well removed from where there's likely any surface low pressure developing. And you can kind of see this this whole mess just continues to be elongated off to the north. And so from the coastal Louisiana all the way back down towards the Bay of uh, Campeche is where we continue to see the uh, showers and thunderstorms here. And then it's a fairly sharp cutoff also on the western side, some dry air here over Texas and Mexico, and, and this will eventually all work its way to the west over the next 24 to 48 hours and, and bring the increasing chances for heavy rainfall and, and uh, impacts on the Texas coast. And we wanted to take a look at the watches and warnings that we have in effect now for, for Texas. So everything you see here in the dark green is a flood watch extending from extreme southwestern Louisiana through the Houston Galveston area, down across the coastal bend in South Texas, back out to the Rio Grande Plains, and then over here towards the San Antonio area. We'll probably see some of this extended back here into the Del Rio uh, um, area, the Kerrville area later today, as we expect these heavy rains to get into, into these areas later this week. And then we do have a tropical storm warning, and that means tropical storm conditions are likely within the next 24 hours. That's winds of 40 miles per hour or so. And it extends along the coast from roughly High Island all the way down to Brownsville. Um, just to be clear, the portion of the warning here on the upper Texas coast from High Island to Port O'Connor is for the offshore waters, not for the coastal counties. And then we do have the coastal counties included, so Calhoun, Refugio, Aransas, down to Oasis, uh, and further south here along the coastal bend. So we could get some of those tropical storm conditions just a little bit inland of the coast, down on the coastal bend, Corpus Christi area, Kingsville, up towards uh, Port Lavaca, Rockport, Port Aransas, as we get into uh, tonight and tomorrow. All right. The other the other thing is the rainfall, and the rainfall has has been um, changeable. I guess is one way to put it. Over the last uh, several days, we've we, we've gone we've gone virtually every direction with the rainfall. Um, and the the trend over the last twenty four hours has been to overall decrease the amounts of rainfall and also shift the axis of heaviest rain down here and toward the coastal bend and and uh, the mid coast. So roughly between about Victoria and Corpus Christi. Um, the other thing to notice is it, there continues to be this very sharp gradient on the north and northeast side of this moisture field. And so this is the high pressure building in from the southeast United States. And so you can see the cutoff here, the difference between say five to six inches of rain, Galveston, Missouri County, 
And by the time you get up towards Lake Livingston, we're talking potentially less than a half an inch of rain with this. And so we continue to see this, this strong gradient and, and where this sits up. And, and one of the, I guess, concerning factors, this is kind of the overall rainfall potential. And we talked about this yesterday, potentially some beneficial rains here in central Texas and back out in southwest Texas. Uh, definitely would keep your guard up out here on any of the dry creeks and rivers. Uh, for the potential for flash flooding, especially Thursday into Friday. And then one of the other things we can look at now is, is what we call the HREF. And this is the high resolution ensemble forecast. And so this is the all of our high resolution models in the in the put together to create an ensemble. So this isn't just one particular model. And this goes out to Wednesday evening. So this now kind of encompasses uh, the the rains that will start uh, later this afternoon tonight and into uh, Wednesday, and you can see there are some higher totals here showing up. I I wouldn't you know say that oh Missouri County looks like they're going to get the the bullseye of this. That's not really uh, what this indicates. This is indi indicates the potential for some of these higher isolated totals we've been talking about, and so. Yeah, we could see some 10, 12, 15 inch totals. And, and really what, what the, the high resolution stuff is showing is these narrow bands, these kind of feeder bands that develop on the northern flank of the circulation uh, centered somewhere down in this area later today and, and Wednesday. And you can get these, these, these banding features that come in and they just train or move over the same areas again and again. And that's where you can really pile up those rainfall totals. And so that potential is still there. Uh, the good news is the HREF is also showing this fairly sharp cutoff here to the north. Um, and so we're pretty confident that we're not going to get a lot of heavy rain inland on the rivers across East Texas, this area up here that has, has had a lot of rain this spring. Um, and it just remains to be seen where exactly, you know, the heaviest rains line up. You know, the down here in the Matagorda Bay area, is it further south towards Corpus Christi? Do we get some sustained banding up here in southeast Texas, you know, southwest of Houston, even the southwest side of, of Harris County? Uh, that's all on the table. And that's why we're just going to have to continue to watch things um, really tonight and Wednesday. So most of the day to day will be fine. Today, Tuesday will be fine. And then we transition into the heavier rains as we get into tonight and Wednesday, and we'll just have to see exactly where those line up and, and how much rain we get. Yeah, that's good news, uh, potentially for especially for those folks north of Houston that have been dealing with that, uh, with the river flooding and been inundated with um, with storms from weeks past. And uh, I like what you mentioned, too, yesterday, Jeff, on yesterday's podcast, that uh, with these thin bands, especially if they're thin feeder bands that are training uh, you you can get potentially four or five inches, and then your your neighbor that just lives a couple miles away may only get an inch, and they're they're asking why. Well, that that's what you get with these tropical systems sometimes, and and we could see that and that's showing up on the H ref. Of course, we've been talking about rain a lot. There is some wind with this. Uh, most of the wind. Um, we we think of the wind being around the center of the circulation, but this is uh, with this system, it's a little bit different. Um, you notice that these are the the wind. Uh, this is the wind model here, and they're showing tropical force winds out in the Gulf, which is uh, maybe the reason why there is a tropical storm warning out there. Further inland, we still see some pretty gusty winds in the mid twenties or so. Um, this is more because of the, uh, due to the pressure gradient, that high pressure out uh, east of us uh, with the broad low pressure over Central America creating this, this pressure gradient. But either way, we can see winds in Houston Metro in the, you know, 15 to 25 mile an hour range with higher gusts. But as you get closer to the coast, those winds really increase. And then offshore, as you can see there, in the 40s and and then when we have these high winds jeff of course that's going to affect um uh, the coastal flooding situation yeah that's exactly right and and really the the emphasis here is is the fetch of that wind so how how far this wind is blowing across the gulf of mexico it's a very wide area of of 25 to 35 to 45 mile an hour winds and that's just going to pile the water along the texas coast uh, we've already seen some minor coastal flooding this morning around the west end of Galveston Island, and this is just really the start of it. Uh, we're really going to see the seas and the tides increase as we get into later today 
and especially tonight and on Wednesday. And so we're still expecting anywhere from two to four feet of coastal flooding above normally dry ground. And, and you know, well, what is normally uh, normally dry ground? This is this tends to be roughly the vegetation line along the beach. And so, you know, you have the sand and then you you reach into where you start to see some of the vegetation. So this is two to four feet potentially above that level. And so um, at, the, at these types of levels, we are going to see coastal flooding um, and impacts along the coast. So, you know, 87 over at Rollover, uh, it's, uh, Blue Water Highway down in Missouri County, uh, those areas could be inundated along with portions of the west side of Galveston Bay. And we're also keeping a close eye on the Bolivar Galveston Ferry. If we do get up to some of these higher values, it could uh, impact ferry operations uh, in two ways. One is if the water gets too high, the ferry can't dock at the landing. And the second is if, if the seas get too rough between Bolivar and Galveston, they have to um, restrict ferry operations. And so at times of high tide, we could see some issues. We will see some issues down here along the coast. Um, and we could even impact uh, the, the ferry situation here. And so this is this is something I don't want people to be caught off guard by this. The water is, is going to come up, especially tonight, overnight. And then through most of the day Wednesday, um, we're going to have that high tide Wednesday morning. And it's just going to be really slow to come down along the upper coast with that strong onshore 30 to 40 mile an hour wind coming out of the southeast. It's just going to keep the water piled up here along the coast. And even one to three feet further down the coast, um, the National Weather Service did extend the coastal flood warning down the coast to include Matagorda and Jackson counties. I think the levels down here are going to be a little bit lower than what we're going to see up here on the upper coast. And uh, I, did, I did pull up Sandway Pass, and you can see, again, very similar uh, water levels, three to three and a half feet above normally dry ground. So... Um, pretty much what we've what we've been talking about the last couple of days with that water level rise combined with the full moon. And so the other thing tides, and then we also get the heavy rain on those coastal areas down there. Uh, that could result in, in some of the rainfall um, not being able to effectively drain uh, as it normally would. So the backside of Galveston Island, they, they tend to have issues back. Tides are high with, with sometimes with the rainfall. So, you know, the A little bit further south um and i think really the rainfall we're expecting now is is probably going to be mostly manageable at least for the city of houston harris county kind of the urban areas back down to the southwest we'll have to just keep an eye on things you can still get enough rainfall to cause some flooding issues down in that area so um that's that's kind of the the message today is a little bit uh cautiously optimistic on the rainfall still going to have issues certainly on the tides Jeff, thank you very much. We'd also like to remind everyone to please subscribe to our Weather Insights YouTube channel and share our channel so that you, your friends, your family members can stay informed on the latest in the tropics and join us on the next Weather Insights podcast.